Welcome back to Faith Works. I'm your host, Jazzalina, and today's guest is a beauty expert and the founder of Pretty Connected. Laura Yordolian is a Jane of all trades and a master at all. She's a fabulous influencer and has been blogging for over 10 years. She's also an entrepreneur and recently launched her merchandise company, Pretty Connected. Her unique chain straps are perfect for cell phones and more and are sold at Urban Outfitters. Laura is a star and she's doing whatever it takes to make it to the top. Welcome to Faith Works, Lara. Thank so good you. to have you. Thank you for having me. Of course. Thank you for welcoming, welcoming us here in your office. You're always welcome. <laughs> so listen, guys. Lara and I met through our mutual friend, Margo. Yeah. And we met for the first time at 305 Fitness. Best workout. It was we a, danced. We, we danced. It was a dance. It was a studio that felt like a club, but... Our first encounter was sweaty, but really cute. It's how you bond. Sweating brings people together. It you know does. your friends if you can sweat with somebody. Like that's that's the move. No Very makeup, true. just like. Very true. <laughs> and then Lara gave me this beautiful ring, which I love and wear mostly all the time. It's called Boss. Yeah, because you're a boss. That's right. And it's from her Pretty Connected line. We'll talk about that in a bit. So Lara, are you ready? I'm so ready. Well, let's get spiritual. <laughs> what would you say is the beauty and mess behind faith? I mean, the beauty is when things work out or like you have a moment or you put something out in the universe and it happens. I mean, what is better than like getting an email or getting like your dream job or mm -hmm. dream project? Like that is the beauty mm -hmm. or meeting that person you've been wanting to meet. Any of that, like any that moment, that feeling is the beauty. I mean, the hard part is, you know, when things aren't happening or you're impatient. Like I think as I've gotten older, I now realize, you know, there's things I wanted so badly. And then four years later, they came. So I think that, and they didn't come the first time, or I tried something and it was like a no, a no, a no, and then it like appeared one day. That's true. So I think now I have less of those because I'm like, it's just not meant to be right now. Like, it's disappointing. It's always disappointing, but you're like, it's going to happen if it's going to happen. Yeah. And you just learn to like, feel more mature about it and let things go and realize it's just not the time. Mm -hmm. And maybe there's a reason for that. I so I think now I've seen that happen enough times in my life where I'm just like, you have to be patient, which is hard. It is hard, it's but hard. patience is a virtue. It is a virtue. And it is. Now, explain to us, like, how do you keep your, your faith so strong? I mean, I think that there are certain things I just like believe in, being a good person, karma to some extent, but just really kind of giving back and giving to the world and I feel such a sense of joy when I'm able to put people together or make a difference or help somebody who otherwise would not have an opportunity so I think that that's a part of it for me um, and also just like taking a minute and just like whenever I'm stressed you know I rescued a dog a few years ago and he's taught me so much an old man an old man grumpy and sassy as you know <laughs> But you know, he's taught me, you know, sometimes I have to take a break and sometimes I have to walk around the block if something is getting hard or I'm getting a little bit like overwhelmed. And that's my time to just sort of meditate. And I think we all meditate in different ways and I'm trying to be better at like the more conventional way of meditating. But sometimes it's just like going into the room, closing the office door and taking a minute and you know, drinking a glass of water, little things. So I think that like recentering myself is how I kind of keep my faith mm -hmm. strong. And just also every year I do like a big reflection of like, everything I've done in the year, what I've accomplished, because I think that when you move in a fast pace and you've accomplished a lot of things, yeah. you're like, you're just on to the next and you don't get to I actually know. take that moment of being like, I did this amazing thing. And it doesn't sure. matter how small that thing is, it's a big thing when you did it. Yeah. And you're like, moved on, moved on, moved on. So I try to really like, be like, wow. I know it happened six months ago. Focus on the years, present. But like, wow, yeah. And then focus on the present of like, what am I trying to do next? Let's talk a little bit about self-love because like you, we're always trying to give to others and pour ourselves to others. No but, bigger example than <laughs> but why is self-love also so important? Why is it important for us to take that time to kind of do things for ourselves and kind of feed to ourselves instead of just always giving, giving, giving? Yeah, I think that's a very important thing and something that I had to learn over time. I realized, and I don't, my mom is a huge giver, like what a big heart, such a humanitarian. And so I was always brought up that we did things for people. If you have a couch, you open it up to like your friends or family or people who need it, whether they're having a breakup or you just open your like hearts and you give things and you cook for them when they're having a bad day. Or we volunteered at so many shelters growing up on holidays. Like you just did things all the time. 
And so it wasn't something, it felt very natural. But in that, I sometimes, like I had an epiphany, like one day I was like, mom, you taught me too much of that. Like you have to like, you do, you have to take care of yourself because also on the other end, there's so many deserving people of that. But then there's some, a lot that just will suck up your energy and you know, take, take, take. And it's not the same balance as when you're helping somebody who really needs that help or really appreciates you. And so really something in the last five years I've learned is to take care of myself because I wasn't. And for a long time in my career, I think my validation came from helping other people. And now, and you lose things for that. Like you're helping them take steps, but then you're struggling on your end yes. because you're tired, your relationships right. kind of suffer for, certain things suffer because, in, and once you have that realization that it's really important for you to take care of yourself. Yeah, yeah. Um, Self-preservation self is important and very, very like needed. It's and you're, key. And better, and you're a better person, you're a better friend, you're better in your relationships, you're better dogma. You're better at everything when you yeah. really take care of yourself. And so it took me a little while to learn to be a little more selfish, but I feel like that is so important. So I want to talk a little bit about discouragement, right? Because sometimes we do have our moments and we are in a mood, like you just mentioned, where we feel like, oh my gosh, I don't even want to be bothered today. So what do you do when you're going through that? How do you pick yourself up again to feel encouraged and leave the negativity alone? First of all, I think you have to give it like it's minute. Like, so whether that means just like taking a day, like take it or take that few hours, do that yoga class, whatever gives you that zen. Like, yeah. <laughs> but like sit with that for a second because you can't just be like, I don't think we're human. Like we all are gonna go through things. We're, we're just human, it's how it goes. Yeah. But then it's important to be like, okay, what's next? So guys, Lara, she does a lot of great things and she founded her own company called Pretty Connected. Can you tell us how you got that started? Yes. So I come from the beauty world. I was at NARS for two years in international marketing. I went to Juraleek um, as a US marketing manager during their massive rebrand. Um, awesome time to be there. And then I went over to Avon during the Mark Lauren okay. Conrad. Some of you will know what that is. <laughs> Um, time and then I went over to Kiehl's to launch their social media so I was like fully in this like beauty world of everything but I started in marketing and why I mentioned Jerlik and NARS is because it was very conventional marketing no budgets for influencers influencers was a word blogger all that stuff if you're an influencer you're a celebrity right. there was like a celebrity budget maybe celebrity makeup artist but there was not this other division that we now know but there was inklings that there, we were starting to listen to people online, and I thought that was so cool. I knew that online was the future, not, again, I'm not that psychic, but I knew like to what it is now over the last 10 years is, is crazy. I mean, it's really quite it's incredible. Industry. Huge industry. Talking about your blog, right? Because yeah. you have been blogging for about 10 years, okay? Now, in the beginning of that, I know there were probably some moments where you had ups and downs. How were you able to keep pushing? You know, I know you had the vision that it would be something huge, but was there ever, ever a moment where you're like, you know what, I'm not sure about this blog. I don't know if I need to like give it up for now and maybe move on to something else because there are people out there that may want to do the same, but at this present moment, they feel like they're not getting anywhere. So this is like confession time for me. I actually never knew it was going to be a big thing, <laughs> like at all. So for me, it was this creative, and actually I do have this advice for now, like it's, it's a creative expression. Like it should be that. I think if you're trying with an intention, it's, it's very hard and then you're able to feel those discouraging feelings. Now let's talk about your launch party. She had a really big, pretty connected launch party. And I want to know what was it like that moment seeing all of those guests and then having so many sponsors. I mean, that was a lot. I feel like I planned a wedding by myself. <laughs> um, my launch party, you know, when you go to a lot of events, you have this idea of like what makes an event great. Like good people, experiences. Uh, I was very picky on my sponsors, but my sponsors all told my story. Yeah. Like with Sportsac, they were, they've done so much for my charity. I have a beauty charity where we donate products from brands, and anything unused, uh, peer agencies influencers, celebrities, doesn't matter. Anybody wants to give us products that are unused, <laughs> we donate them to women's shelters. And the Sports Act takes them and actually puts them in past season brands. Mm -hmm. They donated to Polish Angels because Lara also 
uh, collaborated with me. And we love working with Polish Angel. We love working with anybody that just like does stuff like this one. Yeah, like yeah. it just lifts people up. And so it was important for me to have them a part of my big launch. And as you have so many great stuff on your pretty connected website and even your chain straps are sold in urban outfits. So can we do a little demo here? Yeah. Show some of the stuff that you have. So I talk a lot about like evolving your brand and you know, trying new things. So for me, this was not something that was planned. Um, this is a camera strap. I used to make my own chain camera straps. I go to events. Did you? Yeah, and I didn't want to wear like a big Sony. It looked a little awkward when you're at like a Vogue event with like your Sony or like a cocktail right, like party. The credentials. Yeah, it's so right, weird. Right. So I used to literally make my own, and like this just looks it matches anything. You know, you can wear a dress, you can wear jeans, and the it chain. Has charms. It didn't look this professional. Mine was very janky and heavy, <laughs> like uh, so uncomfortable. So I did have charms on mine, which I think is fun because I feel like charm bracelets, charm things in general, you get to be like. Oh, I grew up in Florida, I want flamingos, or like, I don't know, charms are fun. So I wanted, when I said to make them, I was actually just waiting for somebody to make cool camera straps. Like I would Google, she camera strap, cool camera strap, nothing, I could never, like a guitar strap at best, but that was so colorful. So we and have a few, not that heavy no, and we have a few different versions of the chain. We have a few um, vegan leather um, ones too. Around boss rings, um, they all say pretty connected on the inside. I think of this as like a sisterhood. Um, that's why I gave this one. As soon as I met her, I was like, this girl needs a boss ring. Drew Barrymore <laughs> needs a boss ring. Yes. You know, when you meet Where did people, you come up with the idea for the boss so, ring? This is really funny. Um, I once got a mailer with like, something that looked like a Cracker Jack, like a ring. It said boss, it was so janky. But I like loved it because it was like, oh, I love, you know, it just made you feel good. Yeah. So when I did, um, I didn't do like, this was my official launch party recently, but last year I threw a party when I was first, created my first chain strap before I had the rings, the makeup bags, the other chains. And I threw a party, like I love to throw events and I wanted to give everybody like a gift, but I couldn't afford it at the time to give everybody like okay. one of everything from my line. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna make boss rings. So I found a vendor. I was like, I want to say boss. I want to say pretty connected on the inside. They were nearly as nice as these. They look the same, but the, the finish is me. Now we're both friends with Margot and we love her so much, but I want to know like, what's your Margot story? How did you guys meet and how do you make each other better? Yeah, it was great about my Margo story is like you just never know who you've had in your life for years and didn't like we'd email or we'd be sort of on things and had these mutual friends and people would be like, Do you know this person? She'd be like, Do you know Lara? And like we did, but not in this like up close and personal way. And one day she was just like, Should we just have lunch? And I was like, Yes. Sounds like Margo. It was wonderful. <laughs> and we had lunch and like we haven't even been friends. I mean, I guess email friends for a long time, but close friends for a long time, but I would have thought she was my childhood friend. Like, when you just meet somebody who's so on your wavelength, and I just, just love her like, energy, and I love her, you know, you'll sit at lunch with her, and she's like, okay, email this person. Email yes, this person. that is Margo, and she is so supportive. You can't tell Margo you need help with something without her doing it right there and there. Oh, uh, you don't even have to ask for help. Somehow I'm like, did I, okay. Like, she will just, she's just there to make you better and she's she's amazing and it makes me feel good to help somebody like that too because I really we just lift each other up we're always like you know what else can we do who can we bring together and how can we do this and having a partner in that you know even when we met she was inviting us to like fitness things and then we we're like let's make this like a thing do you want me to help you I'll yeah. come and help you I'm so we had dinner together dinner? it's a very romantic dinner <laughs> uh, no but like that's the thing like you just get to spend time and then you meet more people and I was like you know I set up the dinner I was like, let's bring our, like, who would get along really well? Who wants to meet each other? Let's do, like, 15 people max. We had dinner together, and it was so nice to just sit. Because so nice. we work, we all work so hard. Yes. And we're always like, yeah, we're going to get coffee next week, or we're going to do, but then it doesn't happen. And so when you kind of can see three or four people you've been meeting to catch up with, and laugh with them, and eat with them, and just, like, spend that time, yes. it just makes life so much more. I know you all know Patricia Field, okay? She's the big stylist for Sex in the City, as well as the Devil Wears Prada, and she's also friends with Lara. She is. Tia will take credit for being friends with. <laughs> What's that like? How, do you guys go shopping together? I mean, I want to know what a date is like with Patricia Feet. Take me shopping. Actually, I have been shopping with her. She's amazing. Uh, so this is funny. We have a good story. We met through Pop Sugar. They did. She styled the other woman. Um, with Leslie Mann and Cameron Diaz, and they did this big event with her, and it was like a cocktail with Pat, followed by you know an advanced screening of the movie, 
and Q&A with her. So the publicist just introduced us okay. and I had just gotten back from Coachella and I was wearing, I was like on a red eye and I literally was wearing this like, I don't know, it was like a maxi dress with like a wolf on it. I still have it to this day because it's like my pad <laughs> dress. And I just got off this red eye and like had to go direct. It was like this whole crazy thing. So I just like didn't have anything. You just don't know what's clean and not clean. Wow. Threw this dress on, go. And she was like, Laura, I like your dress. And I was like, I just got this at Coachella. And she was like, I've been hearing a lot about this Coachella. I'm going to go with you next year. And I was literally like, were you using it? Like, oh my goodness. On the inside, because I was like, she's not, well, I'm fat, half like losing it, half like just the idea of her wanting to go with me. Not that it was actually happened, but that is, she's a woman of her word. She came with me and one year later, we went to Coachella together. All right, so you recently collaborated with Burt's Bees. I love Burt's Bees. They're the best. I use their makeup removers all the time. What was it like going to their headquarters? Amazing. Burt's Bees, okay, first of all, it's in like North Carolina and they're, they have this campus so they have first of all, it's an old, old tobacco factory so it's like big wood big ceiling i don't know what I'm saying big glass ceiling walls and like a warehouse but like beautiful with gorgeous hard floors and wood beams and okay. magic <laughs> then when you walk in there's like a store so you can actually see everything out i don't think they actually sell it but they have like all the products so you can see all the makeup everything's recyclable all their packaging those makeup wipes you love the micellar yes they have they, sage they've saved uh -huh. all different types <laughs> but the micellar is particularly the sense of skin one which i also mm -hmm. love um is made out of cotton salve so when they actually use the leftover all brand new they don't recycle them but like when you go to a, like a t-shirt place i guess the leftover that would normally get thrown out. They recycle them and that's what they that's use. That's why they feel so soft. It's so soft. <laughs> um, but they're great. So they also have bees, which are like locked away. So don't forget, we didn't wear the, no bee suits. You can actually just open the door and like meet the bees in front of you. So as you know, Lara is an amazing beauty expert. You have been seen on like Extra and a whole bunch of other shows. How do you prepare for your segments? It always depends. You know, I'm very natural when it comes to like with a host. I was recently an extra where I was like more talking to the camera, which also takes, that takes a lot more preparation because okay. you're, you know, you have to continuously talk and remember your tracking yeah, points. Yeah, yeah. When you're talking about things you love and things you know, whether it's eye protection, vitamin C, you know, you, you're ready. You know, you don't need to overly prepare. You want to make sure you get in the key points you want to get in. But for me, I've been doing it for so long, just being concise about why somebody will love something or why it's right for them okay. comes very naturally. Okay. I I think that if I was talking about something I knew nothing about, like automotive parts, I'd have to like prepare for hours. But yeah. otherwise, it's like drink a lot of water, get good sleep, okay. make sure I'm rested. Now, another thing I want to talk to you about is that in the world of social media, there are so many influencers that are out there. So is there a difference between an influencer and a beauty expert? Oh, absolutely. I think that there are beauty experts that are influencers and you know, vice versa. So I think of an, for me, I did grow up and I'm considered like an influencer from the influencer world. But for me, you know, I've always worked in beauty. So for me, it didn't feel like, you know, I've done so many trainings between Kiehl's, Jurelique, NARS, and half the other brands I've consulted for. Like I go to 10,000 beauty events. I meet all the founders of brands. So for me, being an expert just from that virtuous world makes me an expert. Now, for influencers, I think that it's a little bit mixed. And sometimes, you know, my editor friends make fun of things. They're like, yeah, but you're not that kind of influencer. And I'm like, you know what? With most of you, I could school of beauty any day of the week. I can answer anyone's questions. Now, influence, you can just be influential. You can just have a big following. It doesn't mean that somebody's going to follow you for that thing, though. If you don't, you know, I think that it's great that beauty is money and, you know, you can be 20 and endorse this, that, and whatever and you know, make your money, but that doesn't make you an expert in it. It doesn't mean it's gonna convert. It doesn't mean, you know, I see it all the time. You're not recommending the right product. You're not even using the right product. Being an expert does take a little bit more information, uh, but you can do that. You can research, you can use the internet. So you know it's my favorite part of the show, right? It is time for the treasure box. All right, Lara, here it is. Okay, so again, I'm very grateful for you being a guest here on Faith Work. So I would love for you to pick a gift. You're gonna close your eyes, put your hand in the box, and let's see what you get. Let's see what speaks to you. Ooh, that's actually so beautiful and one of my favorites. Oh my God, I love this. It's a gold rosary. <laughs> I love rosaries. My grandfather always had rosary beads and would like count them. So for me, it's like very therapeutic. This is gonna go in my new office. This is my first interview in my new office. Aww. 
So thank you so much for that. Yes. Oh, this is so ah, you're so, so lovely. welcome. Look, do you have a testimony or a confession you want to make before we go? Let's say testimony. Um, I think that, you know, it's easy to get discouraged and I really just believe that like you can do anything you have to really work hard like nothing's ever gonna be easy and I think that you know for me when I started all these projects I didn't go in with the expectation of it being this massive thing I just worked really hard at it and I like loved it and I nurtured it and I think if you give yourself that space and really believe in yourself but also really put in that work um, it's you know you can learn anything I love that Lara thank you so much for sharing it's so beautiful thank you again for being a guest here on faith works Thank you everyone for watching Faith Works. Please subscribe to my channel and always remember walk by faith. Walk by sight. That's right guys. See you next time.